The 1980s, that was certainly a different era for the Great America Parks, i.e. California's Great America and Six Flags Great America. At the time, neither park was under the name of Six Flags Paramount or Cedar Fair yet. They were actually owned by the Marriott Corporation, and each park went by the name of Marriott's Great America. And for the better part of five years after each park opened back in 1976, they remained relatively the same, if not exact carbon copies of one another. For instance, they had the exact same layout, no big deal, but they also had the exact same attraction lineup of both having a sky world, both having a demon, both having a wizard, you get the point. Each park, they kind of lacked any individuality. That was until in 1981, when Marriott's Great America in Gurney, Illinois, they got American Eagle. This would be the first major installation from Intamin. Sure, they have built other attractions beforehand, but those were really just subcontracted. American Eagle would be their first large-scale coaster that wasn't, you know, Junior Gemini over at Cedar Point. At the time in 1981, it had the tallest drop on a coaster, it was the fastest coaster, and still today, it's the world's largest racing wooden coaster. I mean, it stretches the entire width of the park. If not that, American Eagle kind of signified the two parks going in different directions. Because up to that point, whenever a Great America Park got like a new addition, the other park would get an exact copy almost immediately. American Eagle was the exception though. It was custom built for the one in Illinois. The one in California didn't get anything like it. In fact, the last time these parks got anything identical before completely going down different roads was in 1983, when each location got one of the first ever Intamin drop towers, known as the Freefall model. Both Great Americas called it the Edge. The difference, however, the one in California would last for quite some time. The one in Gurney, however, would go down in infamy for an accident that happened back in 1984, one year after it opened then later closed down in 86. So what exactly happened on this drop tower that made the park close it down only a mere three years after it opened? Well, let's find out because this is everything you need to know about the edge. The longest right. two and a half no. seconds in the world. Right, the edge. No problem, man. <laughs> Observe how it's done now. New at Marriott's Great America, the edge. <laughs> The longest two and a half seconds in the world. In 1982, Illinois' Great America was looking for their next new addition. After spending two years constructing one of their largest rides to date, they wanted something to kind of fall back on, this time having it be more of a flat ride. After looking around, they stumbled upon a new ride that popped up at Magic Mountain over in California. This was the first ever drop tower. Now, it's not exactly the drop tower that we know today, but you know, it was a stepping stone, if you will. The Marriott Corporation was instantly hooked on this idea, so they bought two of them to open immediately the following year, along with a bunch of other parks that were trying to get on this Intamin hype. And since they just worked with Intamin on American Eagle and a few other attractions before, because remember, Intamin they used to subcontract, so they helped build some other additions like the triple Ferris wheel. So it made Intamin look a lot more appealing when they wanted a new addition. Then in May 1983, the edge opened to the public. Now, as I said earlier, this drop tower is pretty unconventional, as in it's nothing like the drop towers we see today, where, you know, it's actually a tower that's jutting into the sky, where in this case, it's more of a rectangle shape with two different shafts for the car to go through, with one essentially just being an elevator and the other shaft kind of mimicking a roller coaster, which is really what they were going for with this model. Intamin, they didn't seem like they knew what to do with this concept. They were testing new waters when they were trying to build a drop tower, so they just stuck to what they knew which was roller coasters. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's actually look at the ride experience. So you begin by entering one of the eight cars with four cross seating. Then you move backwards out of the station and enter shaft one. Now, again, I have to go by my statement that this is more roller coaster than drop tower because you're not carried by cables. You're brought up to the top by via a chain lift. Once you reach the summit of the 131 foot tall lift hill, you move forward outside of shaft one and enter shaft two on the exterior of the tower. And then without warning, you drop. 60 feet and then for 33 feet you begin to level out by that i mean you change orientation until you're positioned on your back facing the sky and after you come to a complete stop the track switches you return to your upright position then finally roll back into the station 
all in all, The Edge, it was a thrilling attraction, but it was a very short ride. And the marketing team at Grid America, they definitely knew that. If you paid attention to that commercial from earlier, they really leaned hard on their slogan, the longest two and a half seconds in the world, as they desperately tried to invoke fear out of their guests. <laughs> But they definitely couldn't anticipate why guests were so afraid of this ride. The following year in 1984, an incident would occur that would completely damage the reputation of The Edge. What happened exactly? Well, let me try to explain. It was a nice opening weekend at Great America when a group of three teenagers tried to go on The Edge. They got on the ride, everything seemed fine. But as they were going up the chain lift, something began to happen. At around the 60 foot mark, they began to slow down and eventually come to a complete stop. Normally, that wouldn't be that big of a deal. The anti-rollbacks would catch you and nothing would happen. But for some reason, the car, it didn't latch on to the anti-rollback. So it began to plummet to the bottom of the lift hill. Fortunately, though, it wasn't going anywhere near terminal velocity because it only fell 60 feet and it was still latched onto the chain lift. So that caused some kind of drag to slow it down because it had a pull against the motor. So when the car hit the base of the lift hill, the impact wasn't as forceful as it could have been. But still, all three teenagers, they were rushed over to the hospital. And fortunately, they only suffered from minor injuries and they were all released the exact same day. So yeah, the three teenagers Teenagers, they didn't die on the edge. And I really want to stress that point. No one died from this ride. When the accident occurred, people thought of all these random rumors that simply weren't true. Like the car that fell actually hit another car and killed eight people. Or the car went flying off the track and landed on the midway. There were just a bunch of rumors that simply weren't true. But people just believed them. Because for one, this was the early 1980s. The internet wasn't exactly a thing. So no one could just go and fact check by finding a report or see what the park had to say. Everything just spread by word of mouth. So after this one incident where people just got injured, the entire ride got this terrible reputation and ridership just flatlined. Even after Great America fixed the supposed issue with the ride. There's no exact statement on why this happened, but my suspicion is that maybe they didn't reassemble one of the cars correctly, so the anti-rollback on it didn't function properly. That's my guess because this did happen at the beginning of the season, so maintenance probably made a mistake when they reassembled it after the winter. But after that event, Later in 1984, the park doubled the amount of anti-rollbacks on the ride, so this incident could never happen again. But at that point, it didn't matter. The people, they didn't want to ride the edge. And by 1985, ridership was at an all-time low. And in 1986, Great America made the choice to completely get rid of the edge. They sold it and shipped it off to a different park called Rocky Point Park. Yeah, I don't know what that place is. But then after that, it was sold to Geauga Lake, where it closed permanently in 2005. Again, this ride only lasted three years. Compare that to California's Great America, where their intimate free fall lasted from 1983 to 1995. So, you know, this one lasted a bit longer. But in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter. Besides this one particular incident, there's a reason the intimate free fall got discontinued and why they didn't really produce that many. It's because the entire concept is a prototype. All these rides were prototypes. They were meant to help us build bigger and better attractions, and that's why many people love these first-generation drop towers. However, the people in Chicago won't see it that way. The locals will always see the Intamin Freefall as a gigantic failure and as a devastating part of Great America's history. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on The Edge. Please leave a like and subscribe. I'm not here to force you, but I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next week.